Hey everyone, I am Steve from GamersNexus.net and we have a huge amount of video cards on the table right now because I just got done doing a GPU benchmark of The Witcher 3 and I worked on this from about 7 p.m. on Monday through 9 a.m. on launch day and the reason it took so long is because we're very careful with our methodology to make sure that the results are accurate and that they are representative of real world in-game use. Part of this includes developing a custom in-game benchmark where we look for various objects in the game that reflect the game's settings. So there's a lot of settings in the game, uh, water quality, grass density, things like that, chromatic aberration, and I try to include those different elements of gameplay to ensure that it is actually reflected in the benchmark. We also do multiple test passes to eliminate outliers and then average the results. And further, I collect data on average FPS, 1% low FPS, and 0.1% low FPS. The percentages are basically the 99th and 99.9 .9 percentile frame rate results within our 30 second testing period. And these represent dips and stuttering and very jarring experiences to the user. So these are important numbers that can show when the game will noticeably stutter while you're playing it and it creates sort of a hiccup in the environment where it looks like the game briefly hangs on to a frame a little bit longer than it should so that's one of the things we're collecting data on in these results the witcher 3 has a lot of settings that aren't normally named in games so there are some new settings here and it's not quite as complex as gta 5's very deep settings but definitely worth going over them briefly and i'll have a full optimization guide online after this for a brief overview of the settings present a few of the unknown ones are in the post-processing effects tab and these would include things like chromatic aberration which is a photography term and it applies to the witcher 3 you can enable it or disable it quite simply and chromatic aberration is an effect that exists in photography that is resultant of the lens and how it interacts with the light it's when the lens has difficulty getting the color correct and focusing on a certain uh, color wavelength when you're shooting a photo so in the game this will be present mostly when looking at light coming through windows or light shimmering around objects due to various types of backlighting and that creates a sort of glow around the object and it makes it look a little less in focus and this is actually intentional it, it creates a cinematic effect this isn't something you would really see in the real world it's not something you see without a lens for the most part so it is definitely more cinematic and less realistic in that instance but you can enable or disable it uh, it does not have a huge frame rate impact from what i've seen so far but i haven't finalized those tests there are also things like vignetting. Vignetting creates a soft shadow around the center of whatever is in focus. So it creates a, a darkness around the focused object. And then you've got depth of field, which we've discussed before. DOF is another photographic term. It creates a, a level of depth and layering to your shot where there's a bokeh effect around the subject that's in focus. So if I'm in focus right now, if we had a, a lens with better depth of field on this camera, this wall would be more blurred out. These video cards might be partially blurred out and then I would be the most in focus. So that gives you an idea of what happens. And this is visible in the game as well and in GTA 5. Bloom is another one. This one has been around for quite a while, made a big showing in Far Cry in the past. And Bloom creates a shimmering effect around heat or light sources. So in The Witcher 3, a good example would be fire. If you have an open flame and you have Bloom enabled, you'll see a slight shimmering over the fire. And that's all that really does. It's just a filter. And all the post-processing effects are applied as a filter atop the already rendered uh, objects, models, polys, things like that, and it just sort of affects how you view the game through the viewport, so to speak, of the character. In terms of performance, The Witcher 3 was actually fairly poorly optimized, as you'll see in these charts, and it ran not that great on SLI 980s, on a Titan X, all the way down the range. Definitely does not run too well on AMD right now. Note that for these tests, we had the newest NVIDIA drivers, and we tried to use the beta AMD drivers, which are still ancient, so to speak, in terms of drivers. They go back to uh, GTA 5 or before that even. So the latest AMD drivers are not optimized for The Witcher 3. And at the time of filming, there are not new drivers that are built for The Witcher 3. So these charts, the numbers will change when AMD does actually optimize their drivers for the game. To this end, when trying to use the 15.4 drivers, the beta ones, we found that there were issues detecting some cards. There were other issues with crashing, things like that. I had to roll back 
to the most recent stable drivers, which are very old. I think they're December, and that's just because AMD hasn't updated in quite a while. Uh, likely do the new video cards coming out soon. That'll probably get the biggest push. But NVIDIA had game-ready drivers, so you will see a performance boost there. Some NVIDIA users on the 700 series of last generation cards noted that they were able to eliminate crashing by rolling back to the previous GTA 5 drivers rather than using the Witcher ones. Let's talk about the benchmarks already. So at 4K, two SLI GTX 980s are barely able to run the game at a playable FPS. They're about 10 FPS below where I would want them to be. Ideally, you sit at 60. Uh, and then a Titan X is a little bit worse than those. This is known that the 980s outperform a Titan X in most games when an SLI. And that's just because the 12 gigabytes of video memory doesn't do as much for you as the added processing power of an additional video card. Dropping down the medium settings gets a bit more playable, but it's still a little rough playing the game at 4K with any graphics configuration. Then we look at 1440p. Now you'll notice the 290X is not present on the 1440p benchmarks, and this is because of an issue with The Witcher 3. It's a, a weird bug where 1440p does not appear as available for the GTX 980 single or for the R9 290X, just some of them. I was able to force the 980 to appear by building an SLI configuration and then disabling the SLI. So, it's not really a realistic approach, no one would actually do that, but I was able to sort of hack a 1440 availability in the, in the menus by doing that. I could not get 1440 to appear as an option for the 290X, might be able to hack it through a game configuration file, but I haven't tried it yet, but I, I do have a suspicion that is possible. As you see here, a single GTX 980 doesn't do too poorly, and the R9 285 is sort of just on the border of playability, uh, depending on if you're at medium or ultra. And then dropping down to 1080p, this is where things get interesting. 1080p with Ultra, the 980 can barely push 60 FPS average, and that's the average frame rate. That's a very expensive video card to play 1080p Ultra. The game looks good, I don't know that it looks that good, but that's really not, that's up for you to decide, that's a subjective thing. But when we look past the 980, the 1% low and 0.1% low FPS that I was telling you about are tanked by the graphics settings. You can see that some of these cards, the 980 included, are getting 14, 17 FPS for the lows. And this means that you're getting very noticeable as a user jarring when you're playing the game. So you'll get a, a stutter every now and then. Each of these tests is 30 seconds long and I repeated them several times. Within that 30 seconds I would notice the stuttering at least once. So that is definitely a noticeable issue. And this is where The Witcher 3 is poorly optimized as I called it because in most other games we benchmark, there's not such a, a huge 3 or 4x disparity between the 1% lows and the rest of the frame rates, the, 90, the rest of the 99% of the frame rates. The 290X enters playable range when we go down to 1080p medium. It's well within playable range at 75 FPS. Unfortunately, I do not have a 280X or a GTX 970. I'm trying to get a 970 and trying to get a 280X, but we haven't been able to get one from AMD, so that is not on these charts. The GTX 970 would be playable at 1080p medium, judging by our other performance of video cards in the spectrum. The GTX 960s, for example, are in the 50 FPS range, and you'll see that there's not a huge difference between 2 and 4 gigabytes for these cards. But if you're curious how 2 versus 4 gigabytes actually impacts performance in other games, on a GTX 960, I do have a video for that on the channel. And finally, here's the low chart. Uh, the Witcher 3 is really not that well optimized. You need very high-end hardware to get a good frame rate. We're getting a lot of comments on the website that are talking about how people are getting a good average FPS and they don't know why we're calling it poorly optimized. The reason is you need to measure the 1% lows and 0.1% lows to see where the frame rate actually does tank. It's a little less noticeable. It is noticeable and it does require certain scenes in the game. When the game starts going more hectic with post-processing effects like bloom and aberration and you have a high amount of polys drawn to the screen, you're making more draw calls because there's more complex geometry on the screen, this is when the frame rate will really tank and when you'll notice those dips a lot more. So it does take a certain type of testing to, to evoke these failures. So that is all for our Witcher 3 benchmark. If you like our journalistic approach to things and my efforts to keep everything objective and eliminate a lot of the marketing heavy stuff on YouTube and on some websites, then please consider looking into our Patreon campaign. This is a new effort we're starting up to help fund better equipment. We're building a video set, so that's pretty exciting to have a proper set. Buying some studio lights so I don't have to use these uh, strategically placed lamps just out of shot 
and a blindingly bright camera light. So things are going pretty well for the channel, and that is because we have great fans who have lately been very vocal on the comments, and you guys are great at telling us the things that you like so that I can make sure we keep doing them, and I appreciate that very much. So again, check out the Patreon campaign. Please subscribe to the channel if you like this content. Check the article for more, and I will see you all next time.